You're listening to the Maritime Gardening Podcast, episode 118, brought to you by Vessi Seeds and Safer's Gardening Product. And today I've got my old co podcast host, <laughs> slash producer, slash web guy, slash tech guy, slash friend, Dave Doggett. Dave, say hey. hello. So, hey, Greg, good to be back. For those of you that are new to my podcast or just started watching my show, uh, it used to be uh, sort of a two man show. And then Dave sort of uh, backed away from that, but he still runs all the, the, if you ever go to my website, he created that, he did all, does all that and still does all of that and solves all the problems. All He does all the things I don't know how to do. Mm. <laughs> so, Isn't that much? <laughs> well, the things I don't <laughs> know how to do, I, I just don't know how to do. So, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> so I've not invested the mm. time to figure it out. Um, mm. So I thought what we do today, at the end of the, the last podcast of the year, I always have Dave back and we come up with some concept for the show. But today I thought uh, well, we just do a viewer question show and, and Dave will read the question. And maybe because this, because the person who wrote the question isn't here, um, maybe he'll, if he has any sort of follow-up questions, he'll try to put himself in the mind of the person who wrote the question. And yeah. then uh, if I, my answer is uh, inadequate or unsatisfactory, he'll, uh, he'll I'll probe, he'll probe. <laughs> And ask for more. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. Uh, we were a little bit of a joking around prior to the uh, recording of this. <laughs> Humor went in many directions. Let's just put it that mm -hmm. way. So, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, okay. So, and before we get started, um, I guess I should ask Dave, uh, how are you doing? And, uh, and doing how okay. Yeah, doing okay. Pandemic is. You know, everybody knows it's still going on, and but I've been working at home for 20 years, so it really hasn't changed much for me. So I don't know how you do it, man. Uh, I don't know how I do it. Like I, I found when I was so right now I, I still go to my office, but I work from home two days a week. But I'm mm. there three days a week. I found when I was working from home every day of the week, I got progressively depressed. Over, I mean, not clinically, <laughs> not clinically depressed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't because my family's here and my wife is here, my kids, uh, you know, I really enjoy their company. Uh, it's just that for me, my, my house is like the fun place mm -hmm. and my work is the not fun place. Mm. Yeah. And so my house became less fun because I was in my office. I mean, I basically in the office here where I'm interviewing you, I'm either playing video games mm -hmm. um, or, or doing something creative, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it, you know, coming up with an idea for a video, editing a video, yeah. or uh, writing that book that I'm never going to finish about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's basically my, my office is a place of freedom and creativity and fun. And now I had to like eight hours a day, uh, you know, do my, you know, sort mm -hmm. of not so exciting job. Yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah. so fun job, right? Uh, yeah, so. I've heard, this, heard the same thing from a lot of other people who you know, could never really appreciate the whole working from home thing until the pandemic happened. And um, uh, I have friends that are like, yeah, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you've done it. And I'm, I'm a little different though. I mean, I don't, I don't sit down and, and work eight hours straight. You know, I might work two hours and then go off and do something with one of my kids or, you know, fix but lunch you, or something. I do that, but then I don't want to come back. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily want to come back. It's maybe I guess I enjoy my work. Yeah, I mean, you're self-employed. Um, you're, you're doing what you want to do. It's your business. Yeah, I, I, I'm just I'm in that mindset. Like I say, twenty, I think twenty-two years into it now, and um, it's there are times it's great, and there are times it's absolutely horrible. But yeah. it's uh, it levels out, and um, you know, at the end of the day, I do what I got to do. Yeah, yeah. And how's the, uh, so Dave has a, uh, a, Dave has his own podcast as well called, well, you got two or is it one? I, I do course. actually have two. They're essentially what you would call pod faded. Pod faded? <laughs> <laughs> because they have not had new episodes for an, uh, you know, quite some time. But yeah, I did one on um, the Maritime Outdoorsman, which ended up being for the majority uh, angling related, but I had some hunting and, and outdoor other other outdoor talk in there. I really would like to get back onto it. 
And then I had another one that was more multiple streams of income. That was what it was called, the multiple multiple streams of income podcast. Oh. That's kind of I, I just wanted to, you know, share, you know, kind of a little bit about my world that I end up working in and the clients I end up reaching. And uh, it's, you know, it's not for everybody, but uh, maybe I'll get back, get back into producing episodes. I'm not as diligent as you, which is, uh, you know, one of my, uh, one of my downfalls, I would say. So, you know, you never know, maybe 20, you have to stick to a schedule. Yeah. Maybe 2022 is that year. Well, and I found, so we were doing one every two weeks when our first season, maybe even the first two seasons we did Mm -hmm. one every two weeks. And I found that was too much. Yeah. Um, so I scaled it back to one a month and that's, that's more, mm-hmm. seems to be more of the pace I want to keep. Um, yeah. cause I find, you know, either, a, you know, like I've got a couple people that come back almost every year, like Robert Pavlis. So it's easy to throw it at, but, but getting a new mm-hmm. person on, uh, mm-hmm. getting a new person on the podcast is difficult. Um, mm-hmm. cause they don't know if you're some sort of whack job, who's going to hit them with mm-hmm. all those kinds of weird questions, or if you're, you know, mm-hmm. into some weird theory or some crazy crap, right. you know, and right. so they don't want to associate their brand with you. Right. If you're, yeah. so they have to, mm-hmm. you have to write a very carefully worded in, you know, email saying, hi, this is what I, and it has to be in, in like, in like, yeah. you know, five sentences. I have to say, hi, my name's Greg. I'm not crazy. I'd like to interview you, <laughs> you know, please come on. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm not going to ruin your yeah. life, ruin your career, yeah. you know? Yeah, no, that's true. So that's it's true. a lot. To, so it's, it's a lot of effort. So I found once a month, or if it's just me talking, I have to put together like a 45 to one hour, uh, in, uh, like a lecture, right? Mm. An interest, and it has to be interesting, mm. right? I have to, yeah. you know, come up with something I can talk about. Right. And I mean, you, you don't, right. you don't write it out like a script, but you have to have an right. idea of where you're going to go with everything. And yeah. you have to think it through. So it'll take me Usually I do it on my, so I have a regular job. So I'm, when I'm at work uh, on my lunch breaks, I'll sit down with just a piece of paper and start just the way I would put when I was teaching, uh, teaching at a university, yeah. I put down notes and sort of mm-hmm. organize them and, and reorganize them and reorganize them into like an order that I think is a mm-hmm. good, a good flow for a discussion. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, anyway, all this stuff takes time. But I mean, my, my point of bringing that up is that you're, you're a good interviewer, right? So um, yeah. so you should, you should stick Appreciate with it, and, uh, you know, and yeah, also you I w- know a whole bunch of people in this local area that are in that world. Right. So they'll, they all know you, yeah. you don't have my problem. You don't have to convince them. You're not a crazy whack job. That's, right? that's true. That, that, <laughs> so, that is true. All you got to do is have, call them. <laughs> well, you have a wider reach, a, a bigger scope, right. But you're right in the, in the Maritimes, uh, I still have a pretty good network of people that, you know, don't have to think twice if I wanted to get them on which is yeah it's good i appreciate that i i really do need to get back on that oh yeah well it's a good you know every everyone i've listened to it's an interesting converse it's a good conversation right so yeah uh, the only thing the only thing i would add to it is is record it video wise and put it up on youtube as well i seem to think yeah i think i would have yeah i would have to do that from now on yeah yeah Yeah. uh a quick note for uh everybody listening in just in, in case um you know, I'll, I'll do a little sort of spiel for the sponsors at the end of the episode, but just so you know uh, uh, where everything's going this season, if you if you haven't been watching my um, my videos. Uh, so Vessi Seeds has uh, re-upped with us for uh, 2022. So the coupon code is, G- I'll put all these details will be in the, the you know, the, the description box mm-hmm. at the end of the video, but uh, the coupon code is GAVS22, okay? And that's for free shipping on, on free shipping on your order as long as there's a pack of seeds, at least one pack of seeds in the order, which means you can order five apple trees and five pear trees and one pack of seeds and get that all shipped for free. It's not a bad nice. deal, right? There are things that they won't ship for free that are what they call oversized items, really big, mm-hmm. sort of heavy things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even potatoes are not oversized yeah. items. So you can get potatoes shipped for free, which really mm. is are heavy, right? Um, mm. So that's a good deal. Um, and that runs from December 1st, 2021. So it's been, that's the code that's been in operation all this month until the end of November, 2022. That's the, that's the window they like to do it for. Um, I'm in talks with uh, Safer. I mean, Safer's never had a deal anyway, but they're basically the sponsor for the show for uh, 2021. Um, hopefully they'll do something with me for 2022. Even if they don't, I like their stuff. 
it's mm -hmm. good stuff and you can buy it at Vessi's anyway. So <laughs> buy it at mm -hmm. Vessi's <laughs> and you'll get free shipping at least, right? Um, yeah. A couple other uh, things. Uh, there's a company called the Newfoundland Knife Company. Um, I don't really have a sponsorship deal with them, but uh, I have a second channel called Outdoors on the Cheap. And it's just like bushcraft, fishing, hunting, being out in the woods, all that sort of, that sort of general theme. And uh, what they agreed to do was to give me uh give two of these this is a silky gumboy nice. really handy folding knife yeah. that's on the pole uh i'll randomly choose from my first thousand viewers two people and they'll get one of these and i haven't hit a thousand yet i'm at about 800 uh, not viewers subscribers if you haven't nice. subscribed to that you want to get one of these silky gumboy folding saws they're versatile. You can get more than one blade. So this is a really coarse, aggressive blade. But yeah. you can get a fine blade for these as well and use that for pruning uh, in your garden, which I do, right? Um, mm. And they got other knives like this silky big boy, which is much more substantial. Holy moly. Like a folding chainsaw. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, they have really good... I mean, I, I bought these myself and I didn't buy them from, yeah. from him. I've, I've had these for years. Um, that's why I contacted him. I noticed he was selling them as sort of local yeah. mom and pop business. Um, and you can get these smaller one, this pocket boy. They're just, I mean, if, if you, this is one good for pruning as well, this is, if you, mm. all you were going to do is prune, um, unless you're pruning like really big trees, this would probably be do you and you yeah. go through your back pocket. Just make sure you yeah. put it in, put it in your pocket this way, not this way. It'll cut a hole through your pocket. <laughs> right. It's not sharp here. It's just, there's an edge metal here. Yeah. There's metal there. Um, and they also got things like this, which is like a really nice. Uh, fine sort of carpentry yeah, yeah. Uh, you know they got anyway they got it's a newfoundland knife company so they got they got these folding saws but they also have knives and axes they got a lot of different guys with knives if you're into all that sort of stuff i'm pretty um on my outdoors on the cheap uh uh channel i just did a thing called uh my my personal quest for the ideal 30 dollar knife um yeah, so yeah. that's sort of where i come i basically like cheap knives <laughs> yeah and i think you can get by with cheap knives um, anyway, the guy's got a broad selection of knives and they go from, uh, relatively cheap to 200 something dollar knives. If you yeah. know, it look really cool. Right. Um, yeah. so, um, anyway, nice. they, uh, their, their coupon code for me for 2022 is MGP Maritime Gardening Podcast, MGP 2022. Nice. And if you use their coupon code on their website, you get 10% off on anything they sell. Right. And mm -hmm. their prices are good. I mean, if you look at their prices for these, they're, I think his prices are, I, I haven't confirmed this, but I wouldn't be surprised just because the look of them cheaper than Amazon, at least on power, mm -hmm. but probably cheaper. So 10% mm -hmm. off either at yeah. Amazon or cheaper than Amazon prices. So it's worth mm -hmm. uh, giving it a go. And I'm pretty sure if you're in the US, they can ship to you, even though they're in Newfoundland, Canada. Right, that doesn't yeah. be a problem shipping this across the border. So, anyway, just a quick mention for that. And uh, also, <laughs> there's a. I wish I had had a copy here. Um, there's a magazine called Canada's Local Gardener, and uh, I've been writing for them this year. I've I've written two or three articles for them. I think three. Um, and uh, I don't. I can't remember the details right now, but I'll, I'll put it in the description box of this video. They're offering a subscription discount for my viewers if you want to subscribe to that. Oh, nice. And actually, they they came. They're they're set in um they're in uh, Ontario, Toronto is where they are located, their office. Um, but they drove down here this summer and took a whole bunch of pictures of my garden. Nice. And I'm going to be in the centerfold, not that kind of centerfold, Dave. But I'm going to be. Uh. <laughs> they're doing an article on my garden mm. and I actually read, they, they gave me a draft to read. It's really, really well written. Like they make, me, cool. they make me seem like a great guy. Um, so it's really, <laughs> I guess the it was like, I was really surprised. Know. Like, wow, this is exactly, I was really surprised. It was really nice, yeah. very nice article. Um, yeah. So uh, that'll be out uh, soon in their, in, in their next episode, but yeah, it's called Canada's local gardener. It's a gardening magazine. They also have a podcast, and I was, I was on their say. and I was on their podcast last year. Um, and I'm going to be on their podcast uh, this year. I'll, I'll I usually, usually make that uh, make those announcements on Facebook on the Facebook mm. website. But but anyway, so that's sort of everything. Sort of maritime gardening news and what's going on with cool. maritime gardening. Uh, now mm. let's get to the viewers' questions. Dave, hit me. Yeah. 
I got my pencil right, here. I'm going to take I'm going to take notes here so I can answer uh, yeah. as, thorough, as thoroughly as possible. Okay, let's see what we can do. See how many of these we can get through. All right, let's start with Robert Bates. So Robert says, good afternoon. I am also in a coastal community and started using seaweed based on some of your videos. I am composting it along with layering in my beds as I am building it. My question is, how deep do you make your layers of seaweed both in the beds and as a top layer? Yeah, um, just a couple inches. That's, that's all I... You know, I, I don't find it to be, I mean, I use it as a mulch just because I use whatever I can get my hands on as a mulch. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll put a layer of seaweed and I'll put hay over top of it, actually, because the thing with seaweed is as a mulch, I don't find it to be good for maintaining moisture levels in the soil. Um, it, it doesn't work as well as grass clippings or hay or leaves. If you put those all the, I did a, a video uh, a couple summers ago it was like the height of summer and I was just driving my hand in, in the soil to see which uh, garden was the most dry or the most wet. And I was comparing mm -hmm. all those different mulches and I found seaweed to be the worst. That is to say the worst for maintaining moisture levels in the soil. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, maybe if you put a ton of it on, it would, it would work. But really when you think about seaweed, there's not a lot there. Most of what, if you pick up 10 pounds of seaweed, you've probably got 0.95 pounds of water in your hand yeah you know what i mean it looks like a lot of stuff yeah. but it's not i don't think it has the carbon content of of leaves or grass or whatever um mm -hmm. so um i find it's it's better mixed in with other things and i've actually uh, had people mention and i've done this too where they'll throw the seaweed out on their lawn and throw leaves out or if they're just if you're going to cut their, basically they mow the seaweed up with the lawn yeah and to sort of give it a bit more substance yeah, cool. and they do that right um where seaweed's different than the lawn is it just it breaks down really fast so um i don't know how much more nutrient mm. sort of value is is imparted in the soil from the seaweed but it breaks down fast um mm. so it, it based, in terms of feeding the soil organisms it, it gets it gets to them quicker sort of thing because it disappears much right. more quickly than other things um, so I don't actually, I've sort of run all over the place with this question, but no, no, but what actually something that comes to mind for me, uh, what about the salt that's in the seaweed? Is that good? There's not a lot of salt in the seaweed. So that's a really yeah. common question. It's basically the number one question they get about seaweed. And, uh, <laughs> so and if I, I listen to every episode, I know that. <laughs> I talked to a biologist friend of mine about that. Cause when you smell it, it's got this salt smell, but it yeah. really doesn't smell like salt it smells okay. like the ocean. And when we think yeah. ocean, we think salt. Um, okay. So uh, he said, if you had a barrel wheelbarrow full of seaweed, it might have a tablespoon of salt in the whole thing. Interesting. Yeah. He said there the only, go. the only salt there is, he said, there's no salt in the seaweed. There's salt in the water that's on the seaweed. Huh. Right. And seawater isn't like pure salt. It's like, no, you know, whatever that some no. X percent, it's pretty lit. Right. I think the, I think the percentage of salt and seaweed is the same as the percentage of salt in your body or something like that. Interesting. Uh, don't quote me on that. Okay. I, I, I will. Okay. <laughs> See you in court. Right. Um, cool. So uh, I think he was just talking about the, the thickness of, so that is to say, I only put a couple inches of it on. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, I, I've, I've found over, I've tried different thicknesses of mulch and that's mm -hmm. that's what i tend to use except with potatoes when you, you can just go to crate you can go to town with potatoes uh, yeah. they seem to find their way through but just a couple mm -hmm. inches okay cool we'll go to the next one this is from the south jersey gardener uh the past season 2021 i discovered alfalfa pellets animal feed to use as a fertilizer i gather from different youtubers that it's npk uh, I assume you know what that is. Yes. Uh, is, is about one slash one slash one to three slash three slash three, depending on who you listen to. I use it in the spring when I plant and in the fall under mulch leaves and compost. Occasionally I'll throw a handful around plants, but I know it's very slow, a slow release. I don't use fertilizer on a regular basis, but in the past I have used the blue stuff. And if something looks sad, I still might, but not much. 
I wondered what your thoughts are on alfalfa. I know you don't use fertilizer, but at about $12 to $15 for a 40 pound bag, it's pretty cheap. I do use a lot of compost in the fall to put beds to rest or in the spring to start a new bed. All right. So, so your thoughts on alfalfa? Yeah. So sh sure, if you got, you know, I don't know how much uh, area of a garden um, you can, can do with that. Um, but if that's working for you and that's easy, that's fine. Um, I think one, one, one error, one, where you might be wrong in your thinking is to think of it as fertilizer. It's not fertilizer. It's basically concentrated alfalfa. So it's, it's no different than any other organic matter, right? It has to break mm -hmm. down. It has to be worked on by, you know, soil organisms. And eventually it will become like a fertilizer. But by throwing that on, it's not that like there's plant, plant available nitrogen in that, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's really no different than putting green grass clippings on your, on your garden if you're adding it in that way, right? right. So to, to me, I wouldn't spend the money on it because you can use, I mean, if that's the only way you can do it, let's say you don't have a lawn or yeah. you don't want to use grass clippings because it has weeds or, or some other reason, right? Um, but I mean, to, to back up from that question a little bit, I, I, don't use, uh, I don't use fertilizer in my garden, but I... I mulch everything in my garden and the mulch gets eaten by the soil organisms and pooped mm. out and it becomes mm. like the mulch basically yeah. becomes compost, which be right. is like fertilizer. Right. Yeah. Uh, and the advantage of doing it that way, aside from, I just use people's yard waste to do all of that mm. is that it keep, it maintains the moisture levels in the soil and all that sort of stuff. Um, whereas, mm. I mean, I don't know how much it would cost if you were going to use, alfalfa pellets the way I use leaves and grass you'd have to put an inch of it on your soil to keep yeah. to keep the evaporation down right um so yeah I mean, if you're using it, it's working and all sort of stuff fine yeah but um I don't see an advantage in using it let's put it that way okay. uh, if, if I was you know I wouldn't I wouldn't switch to it because I like to use a mulch to prevent the soil from I don't like watering my garden and I don't water my garden unless there's like an incredible mm -hmm. uh, dry spell happening um, mm -hmm. so I, I prefer to mulch and to mulch with alfalfa pellets I think would get prohibitively expensive um, yeah. so that's right yeah. that. okay but, cool yeah, as like a, as, a, as like an alternative to manure I'm sure it's a great 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 thing to use mm -hmm. if you're working in it yeah okay cool next uh, well, this isn't even a question. It's just a, a, a best wishes. So Linda Sands says, hey, Greg, no questions, but wanted to wish you, Mrs. Maritime Gardening and the Maritime Gardening Kids, Happy New Year 2022. Thanks, Linda. Uh, awesome. <laughs> okay. Somebody's Thanks a lot. Thank do you. It. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's nice. Uh, so Barry, or sorry, Bill Elrod. Merry Christmas to you. Thanks for making very informative videos. I've learned so much from you. My question is. I bet you said it to all the guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, this is Bill. All right. Uh, what is it? Uh, what do you recommend for someone who has terrible soil, sandy, no organic matter, but wants to improve that soil quickly and grow it, grow in it without using raised beds? I don't have the desire or inclination to spend money on loads of compost. Thanks. Sounds like a question for Greg. Yeah. So I would use horse manure. Um, it's yes, it's full of weed seeds, but weed seeds are in the air. Weed seeds are going to blow yeah. out of the sky into your garden anyway. Uh, right. My entire garden back there was sort of crappy, rocky clay soil. And uh, I just got a whole bunch of uh, aged horse manure. And, uh, and, you know, as long as it's aged, you can, you work that into your sand, you're going to solve your organic matter problem, mm -hmm. right? It's going to break down. It's going to, you know, you, you're basically going to solve every problem you have uh, by working you that go. into your sand. So just, just get a bunch of horse manure and, you know, really this is winter, but you can still gather it this time of year. Yeah. Um, so yeah. even if you can't get aged horse manure, yeah. get, get fresh horse manure right now and put like yeah. a big black tarp over to something like that just let it cook yeah. under the snow all winter long and, and it'll be aged you know and maybe uh once a month go out there and sort of move it around a little bit but yeah. it'll be it'll be aged uh, hopefully if you've got enough enough of it to sort of cook in there 
Um, yeah. Hopefully it'll be aged by uh, fine growing season. But yeah, aged yeah. horse manure is the, you can, they, so, you know, sometimes you can get it for free. And if it's not free, yeah. it's basically cheap, right? And yeah. horse manure, as opposed to other manures, it's much lower in its NPK numbers, its nutrient levels. Yeah. Um, yeah. so you can plant right in horse manure, you can grow things right mm. in it. And I've done it, I've done videos on that. So mm. if you want a cheap soil amendment, that's way cheaper than compost. And I mean, horse manure is compost. It's a bunch of grass yeah. that a, a horse ate and then <laughs> crapped out, right? It's still yeah. grass it, and it, it goes through the horse pretty fast. I mean, that's why horse manure has yeah. so many, uh, weed seeds in it. It goes right through the horse real quick. So I think horses yeah. don't break it down the way cows do. Right. Yeah, okay. um, so uh, like they're uh, ruminants. I, 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 yeah. don't, I don't want to get into the biology of it. But anyway, they don't break yeah. it down as well as cows do. So there's a lot of weed seeds in it. Um, but there's lots of I've done lots of videos on ways around that. It's if your goal is to have a garden that's really productive and grows everything really well, use the horse manure and you, you'll find creative ways to deal with I, there's no way i could have a 2500 square foot garden a full-time job a wife and two kids and many yeah. other inst interests in addition to yeah. a youtube channel and another youtube channel if i was weeding <laughs> all the time and it was an unbearable yeah. problem so you can deal right. with it right so yeah. yeah horse manure get the poop get a horse terry <laughs> yeah, horse, yeah. Uh, i'm surprised you don't have a horse greg uh, i don't have any pets the only pets i have are the horse the 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 goldfish in the backyard who are now like encased in ice they look like oh, hands yeah. and solo right now right yeah, yeah they're just like <laughs> underneath the ice just oh god it's cold out here <laughs> so hopefully they don't die they usually make it through the winter i don't do they're like the best pet pets ever i don't feed them i don't do anything complete neglect That's, that is awesome and they just get I, I bigger and stronger that. every year yeah okay von dinger says merry christmas greg Will you be doing anything new in your garden this year? I'm growing some hydroponic veggies and herbs this winter. I also plan on making my container garden bigger and make my garden beds better while continuing to expand my fruit growing. I look forward to your upcoming growing season. All right. So I was just talking to, uh, I just did a video the other day and I went get seaweed with a buddy of mine. Actually, it's a this the only person I know with a large garden and his garden, his garden's gotten bigger every year. And he, I think it's because he saw mine and saw that it was doable. Uh, and I used to get eggs from him and uh, he's got a truck. So every once in a while we go get seaweed together and we sort of share the, the, the yeah. work of that. Anyway, he was asking me the same thing. Like, you know, cause every year I expand my garden and every year I say, I'm not going to, and every year I do. Yeah. This year, I am not going to expand my garden, but I am going to optimize my garden. So I, I'm going to think of ways to get to use the space better and get more out of the space I have and be more clever with the sort of planting schedules and mm. that sort of stuff. So, and there's a couple of spaces in my garden where there's more walkway than there needs to be. So I'm going, I'm actually going to increase the number, the amount of soil the amount of growing area is going to increase, but I'm not going to sort of increase the garden in that sense. And it's funny, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was asking me uh, how I think about the priorities for, for having a garden. And because my, my goal is never to like grow the, the biggest pumpkin ever or the largest carrot or I mean, my goal every year is to grow as much as I can, spending as little time doing it mm -hmm. and and not waste also it's important to grow like get the combination of things in there such that you can manage it like you don't want to grow stuff mm -hmm. and then have to throw it away because you didn't use like, right, everything. Yeah. use everything so i sort of the goal is to sort of get the most out of the space for the least amount of work and the least amount of money mm -hmm. it's always yeah. like a perfect i was trying to think of like a perfect year would be like the perfect summer with the perfect sun and the perfect rain and sort of the perfect planting schedule and everything just working you know uh, that sort of thing so that's my goal yeah. every year is to sort of get get the most out of the space with uh the sort of no more no more work than is needed mm. i remember once hearing a, a rock climber they asked him um what the perfect climb would be like he climbs mountains and he said if you uh if you if you went to the top of the mountain and poured a drop of water 
and followed that drop of water down to the bottom. If I could climb a mountain the way the, dr the water drop went. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That would be the perfect climb. So yeah. He's talking about sort of efficiency, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. sort of, to me, that's the, I don't really care about having big this or amazing that or, or mm -hmm. how now. I mean, I try to make it look nice and I'm always marvel. You know, if I get a really big carrot, that's cool. Yeah, I like all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But it's more like that sort of like getting the most out of it, the least amount of work, you know, and everything, not a lot of problems. Everything just yeah. looking being lush and bountiful and, and, and growing everything I've grow, I'm happy with and I enjoy it and we're eating it all. Uh, every once in a while, I'll try a new vegetable and no one in the house likes it. That's really frustrating because, yeah. um, and sometimes I don't even like it. <laughs> so it's not yeah. like this year I grew a uh, cabbage and I really was not happy with them. They were really pest, pest ridden. I wasn't, uh, I was very lackadaisical, very laissez faire with using. Uh, sort of the few pesticides I do use. I didn't use them. I might have used them once or twice when the plants were really tiny, but I didn't do anything else. And yeah. uh, I just wasn't happy with the results with that. But anyway, yeah. I'm starting to ramble on my answer here. So that's the next question. I think I answered it. Yeah, I think you got it. Uh, next one's a little longer. It's uh, from Howard Vespers. Two falls ago, I started planting my own homegrown parsnip seeds in the fall, just like you do. I planted them thickly as you recommend because you said homegrown parsnip seeds didn't have as high a germination rate as store-bought seed. Yes. I planted, I planted in either late October or early November, and the next spring I had spotty germination, but I still had more than enough parsnips to suit my needs. I did it again this fall because... I had way more seeds that, than I needed. I gave away a lot of seeds to neighbors. One neighbor planted the seeds I gave him in mid-September, earlier than I thought he should, and he got really good germination. He planted them thickly too, and if they all survive the winter, he will have to thin them out a lot next spring. Do you think the main reason I got such thin germination was simply because I planted them too late in the fall? and it was too cold for the seeds to get a start. I am in zone five in Eastern Ontario. How much warmish weather is there left in a normal year when you, sorry, yeah, when you plant your parsnip seeds and how much sprouting do you see in them before snow covers them? I never actually saw any sprouted parsnips before snow covered them the first fall I planted them or this fall. Yeah, so that's a good that's a good question. I'll, I'll try to paraphrase. Uh, he, he sows parsnips in the fall, and I've done videos on doing that. I actually didn't do it this year, but I have done it. And it, the reason I started sowing them in the fall was that one year I had a carrot or a parsnip grow in my garden that I had not planted. So it was a seed that just fell to the ground in the fall. Mm. And the thing had like a six-inch diameter crown. It was the biggest parsnip I've ever seen. So mm. I thought there must be some magic with this, you know, I'm, yeah. why, why wouldn't I just plant them all in the fall? Yeah. Uh, and I just forgot to do it this year. Now that, you know, um, now the question is, his question is with fall planting, is it better to plant them in September, or October, or November? That's basically what he's driving at. Yeah. Um, I don't know for sure. I mean, really, you, you would want to plant them when you see the seeds falling to the ground. And I would imagine that happens in, you know, sometime in the fall, but I mean, they, they go to seed in the summer. I imagine it starts happening in September. I imagine the seeds start falling to ground in the September. Mm. But mm. the fact that your neighbor's parsnips had better germination than yours, it may have nothing to do with the fact that he sowed them in September and you sowed yours in October, let's say. Mm. There's so many other reasons why that germination could have been better. Is Was it the same variety? Mm. Um, however, that plant stored energy in the seed, his plant, you know, th those seeds might be better seeds in some way. And let's mm -hmm. say they're the same seed. Let's say you gave him some of your seeds. So you're all using the same stuff. How those seeds wintered at his location might've been more favorable to the seed than at your location. There might be something, more shade, more wind, more whatever, right? So the, the mm -hmm. seed might've made it through the winter better where he was. And mm -hmm. then in the spring, in terms of germination, you know, the, the conditions that brought his seeds into germination might have just been better than mm -hmm. at your spot. Even in the two spaces might look the same, but if you looked at how the sun and the shade and yeah. different things, you know, maybe the soil there was 
better hanging on to moisture. So the seed, it might just be that the seeds had conditions they prefer and they germinated better because that guy's spot was a better spot for that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So it might yeah. have nothing to do with, you know, and I guess he was at, he was wondering, this is something I don't know the answer to. Um, if they, if they germinate in the fall, do they even, do those ones survive to the next year or, and I don't know, I don't know if it's handy to have them like begin to grow and then sort of go, uh, I guess just freeze, restart yeah. in the, I don't know if they do that or not. I don't really, mm. it's a good question. I, I should, one of these years, I should do the experiment. I should yeah. have a garden where I plant some at like August, <laughs> some yeah. in September, some in October, do different rows. Yeah. That'd be a great experiment. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, you know, like there isn't a lot of literature on fall planting on parsnips. So I, I don't even know mm. if I could, if I could research it, I suppose, and see if there's an answer, but I don't know if there is an answer out there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a good question, but yeah, I don't, I mean, my best answer to my best answer to you is do what he did next year and let me know yeah. what happens. See if to see if there's yeah. a difference. Uh, but yeah. it, there could be a many reasons. It it might not. The reason is the germination rate was better. It might have nothing to do with the fact that he planted in September and he planted in October. It might be other things, or that could yeah. be the that could be the secret. Maybe it September is the time to do it. Right? So, yeah. Certainly, cool. the one you know that the enormous parsnip I had, that seed was sown when the plant sowed it <laughs> right it happened completely naturally right yeah um and it was about yeah. six feet from where the parts so it literally blown off and the wind huh. landed on the ground just very naturey, right um hmm. so you know so really i guess to circle back plant the seeds when you see them falling off the plant mm. whenever that is where you are that's probably yeah. the that's when the plant's telling you hey seed time <laughs> so yeah. probably the best yeah. time to do it you know I'd, i've never yeah. taken note of when that starts happening when you start seeing the yeah. seeds starting to fall off the seed head but that's probably the best time to plant for that particular yeah. um vegetable cool right, next question all right nora baker filler fillier uh flowering kale just came into its own prettiness as frost was hitting how early do I need to start flowering kale to get a better show next year? Yeah, so th for those that are listening, don't know, because kale makes flowers, but that's not what uh, Nora's talking about. Uh, you know, kale is a biennial plant, and if you leave it in the ground over the winter after its first year, the second year it'll send up a flower and it makes seeds, and that's how you save kale seeds. But that's not what she's talking about. She's talking about a variety of kale that the foliage, as it grows, in a circular pattern, it actually looks like a uh, kind of pinky purple sort of flower, right? Very colorful. Mm. Uh, so a lot of people plant these, it's an ornamental, I mean, so suppose you can eat it, but they're not, <clears throat> that variety isn't developed for its flavor. It's grown right. to be ornamental. So people will plant them in their front gardens. So it looks like they have flowers in the fall, right? Because they basically look like that right up until, depending on where you uh, live, it, they could mm. persist right up until December. So you have some nice color and that sort of thing. Um, what she's saying is that they didn't start looking the way she wanted them to look until it was pretty much too late. So I would just plant them as early as you can. You can plant kale really early. I mean, you can, I have, you know, I save my own kale seeds and because I save my own kale seeds, I drop kale seeds everywhere and they, they tend to come up they don't last long because I've got rabbits and deer and stuff. And they, so, I mean, yeah. the things that eat them, right. But I've had kale grow in my driveway in the gravel mm. right i have it grow up my walking paths in the garden you know i have it basically grow places all over the place so the seeds are tough the seeds don't mind being like cold that sort of thing so you can plant them in in april right so yeah i would i would plant them as soon as the soil can be worked and that way you're, you're sort of guaranteed that the plant will be fully uh fully mature right so the, there's some things that can't like a lot of people and I don't know where, um, did she say where she lives? No, she did no. not. So, I mean, a lot of people where I live in Nova Scotia think they can't plant anything till the end of May. Uh, and that's, they'll say like the first new moon in June Frost. or something like that. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of things you can plant way earlier than that, that it can, that can handle the cold weather, like spinach and mm. peas and lettuce and stuff like that. So there's a lot of, and kale, yeah. a lot of things you can plant way before that, that weekend. 
um, and mm. get things going. So yeah, I would just, you know, this year try planting them in, I mean, I don't know where this person lives. They could be in the Yukon, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. say somewhere yeah. like where I am, you know, uh, try planting them like middle of April sort of thing and, and see what happens. Yeah. If, if you, if I'm going to assume that this, this person planted them in late mm. May, like everybody does. Yeah. Um, so just plant them a month earlier and they'll, cause they can, they can handle mm -hmm. it. They're tough, right? That's, that's okay. why you plant them to be a fall ornamental because they're, they don't mind being frozen and thawed back out. They're really tough. Hmm. Okie dokie. There's a couple more here. Michael Murphy. I'm not sure what he's replying to. He says, great idea, Greg. Must have been in response to something that you put up. Uh, I, I want, because <laughs> Greg doesn't have many good ideas. Um, I wonder if you could give us a one-stop shop course on your berries. How did you like your new raspberry strategy? How are the blueberries? Lingonberries, blackberries, strawberries. Wow. Okay. How are your berries, Greg? <laughs> I got to write them all down so I don't forget. Straw, uh, lingon. I got a couple others as well, but I could probably do a whole episode on that. So maybe that's, yeah. I'll, I'll make a I note. I think that's maybe what he's looking for. Do a berry episode. So I'll do the short version of that and make a note to do a, a whole episode on berries. Um, so I haven't reviewed these questions before Dave read them sort of thing. I thought I'd make it sort of almost like a call in, yeah. like that sort of yeah. thing. So I'm sort of answering just off the cuff. Um, I would say, you know, if you've got space um, and any perennial, any, anything you can put in the ground that'll come back every year and give you food is a great thing to grow, right? Because it's basically like what, what kind of investment will give you that kind of thing back, right? Uh, to start first with the raspberries. Yeah, so I've done a number of videos over the years where I had these, uh, what are they called, uh, ever-bearing raspberries. So they're supposed to give you uh, a crop in the summer and then a crop in the fall. And uh, the growing conditions here are just so crappy. They weren't really, they weren't giving me anything in the summer. And then the fall crop would come just before the frost and they would never mature or even taste good. So, uh, you know, I, and I'm, I am persistent. So I tried strategy after strategy after strategy to make that work for about five years. And then this year I gave up, said the hell with it. So I ordered uh, summer bearing raspberries. And I mean, they just came as canes with like dry roots on them from Vessies. I stuck them in the ground and actually got raspberries off of them this year. Not a lot because their, their plants aren't that big yeah. yet. But each of those plants uh grew well and uh i'm expecting a hell of a lot of raspberries next year they all worked really well i might have even planted them too close together um but they all came in great and uh, i was totally i would recommend that approach uh if you're finding mm. the ever bearing aren't, aren't really coming in right for you just get the one you know it's better to get one good crop and these ones are supposed to taste good and they're supposed to be disease i mean all of SE stuff they sort of pick these sort of ideal varieties of things uh, and they tasted good, the ones I, I was able to eat this year. So mm. yeah, totally happy with the, the new raspberry plan, worked great. Uh, blackberries, I, I moved my blackberry last year uh, or two years ago and it came in really good, but a rabbit got in through my fence this year and it basically, every single blackberry, it, it, it cut the plant off two feet high and the whole plant fell down. Really? So this year was gonna be like a really good blackberry year and I like making blackberry jam. Uh, mm. And I basically lost pretty much everything. Um, <laughs> so it was a disaster. <laughs> exactly. So I got up. Maybe I shouldn't have the blackberries so close to the fence, right? Maybe they should be in mm. a bit. Um, but I certainly have to improve. Uh, my main fence is it's got like a, a two inch by three or four inch mesh. And younger rabbits can get through that. They just I squeeze right through it. Yeah. I've seen them even run and jump and go through it. Really? I expect them to come out in pieces, like in a Bugs Bunny episode, but and they don't, just... like a cheese cutter. <laughs> you know? but, yeah. um, so a little one, sometimes I'll chase them and they'll just go right through it. Like it wasn't even there, right? Um, mm -hmm. So around the bottom of the fence, I have to put a finer chicken wire, but that's sort of the weeds and the different, it, it gets messed up. So like every, I think it needs to be sort of replaced. It's a bit of a chore mm -hmm. to replace it, but they replace it once and it'll last a number of years. I think I went cheap and I used the non-galvanized stuff. So it just disintegrates over time. It's so wet here. Um, strawberries, I gave up on um, day neutral strawberries. That's the kind of strawberry that gives you a perpetual 
Um, so for years I've been using, what's it called? C Seascape, I think. I think that's the name of it. It's a, it's a strawberry that gives you a, a crop in, in June and a crop in, in October. And it also gives you a handful of strawberries intermittently all, mm -hmm. all summer long. And I thought that was a great idea. But in retrospect, um, it, from what I've read, June bearing strawberries, this give you one big crop in June. In terms of yield, they give you the most, right? Mm. And the problem with the ever bearing, well, not these weren't ever, but day neutral, is by having a steady supply of strawberries, you get steady visits from squirrels and th yeah. other things that eat strawberries. And yeah. all it does, and, and um, chipmunks in particular, so all it does is encourage a population of things you don't want around your garden. It doesn't really, it's better to have, you know, all the strawberry. The main reason I grow strawberries is because we like strawberry jam. Yeah. And I don't want to have to drive an hour and a half to the valley and pick strawberries. I want them in my backyard. Yeah. Um, so it's probably, for me, the idea was that I'll just have them all come in in June. Late, it'll be late June here probably. And I'll protect them. When they're, and then it'll be this concentrated period of time where I'm harvesting and protecting strawberries and it's over. Right. And I don't yeah. have to think about them anymore. And I just get, and it really in June, there isn't a lot else coming out of your garden. It's not a busy time in the mm. garden. You know, you're planting things, but you're not harvesting. So that's much better than having all your strawberries get, give your biggest yield in October when you're busy because you've got so many other things coming out of the garden that you're trying to process the stuff. So I just realized logistically, it makes much more sense to have a lot of strawberries to deal with in June when there isn't a lot of uh, things to deal with in the garden anyway. Uh, so I've switched to cool. June bears and they, I planted those all. They were bare root uh, crowns from Bessie's. I planted those. They all came in great. They're all doing great. Um, and the final thing, the lingonberries. So I st still didn't get, I got a handful of lingonberries this year, but really nothing, nothing to write home about. But the plants have um, grown basically. Um, there, some of them are getting, a couple of them are sort of bushy and they're getting bigger and the other ones are, are sort of multiplying. So I'm seeing new plants coming up out of the ground in various spots. So they're basically, mm. they're increasing their, their size and their mass. And my guess is that when they're at a certain size, that's when they start being productive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, every year the plants have gotten bigger. So that's good, <laughs> right? So yeah. they're doing good. Uh, I think cool. was it was that it? just raspberry, yeah, blackberry, those, strawberry. That was all of them. Okay, and I got I got way more thoughts I can bring to bear on that, yeah. but that'd probably be the good good subject matter for an entire uh, yeah. podcast episode. Yeah. yeah, nice. And the last one last is one. Brian Bernard. Okay, can you Brian save Bernard. seeds? Yeah, can you save seeds from your carrots, or do they cross pollinate with queen and flakes? Yeah, so I was supposed to look this one up. I forgot to look it up. There, I think I've researched this before, so there is a risk of that. So they will not cross-pollinate with parsnips. I know that. Um, but from what I've read, there is a risk of, of carrots cross-pollinating with other carrot, carroty things. Yeah. Um, so you have to, you know, you, I guess you just take your chances. Um, I saved carrot seeds uh, a couple of years ago. I found the germination rate of my saved carrot seeds unbelievably bad. Um, and uh, you've you got to uh, harvest them at the right time and store them in the right way and all that sort of stuff. And there's all, because certainly where I live, there's Queen Anne's lace grows everywhere, it grows all yeah. around my garden. <laughs> it's like literally yeah. everywhere. So you never know what you're going to get. So yeah, if, if, if you've got those things growing around your garden, there's always the risk that your carrots won't be as carroty as you'd like. Um, and also, you know, the carrot might, it might be the case that it cross pollinates with that. Remember a hybrid, um, the problem with a hybrid is that the child may resemble one of the parents, but it's the child of the child that's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> right, so your carrot plant may you may save the seeds and those seeds give you nice carrots and then you save those seeds and it's a catastrophe right because yeah. that's how hybrids work you get you get a hybrid from the two the two parents when you hybrid, thin it down but when the hybrid has seeds yeah you don't get anything like what you know what what you got it from right so um yeah. 
Yeah. So I hope that helped. So yeah, Ooh. that's that's always a risk with. I mean, with saving seeds are always there's always a, it's a fun thing to do, and I enjoy doing it. But there's an, always a risk of cross pollination, especially if you have some wild weed all over the place that can pro, that can pollinate your plant. Um, yeah. So I, I will. If there's an uh, if I was wrong in this answer, I'm pretty sure carrots can cross pollinate with them, because uh, I remember reading about this a number of years ago. Um, but I'll, I'll double check that and. Uh, you know, do a sort of addendum <laughs> yeah. in the editing just to be sure. Yeah, cool. Great. Well, that was fun. That was a good way to do it. And then we're just in time. Yeah, we didn't gotta... go too, too long either. No, no. And we sort of had a hard, hard landing date for ending this episode. So we sort of have to wrap things yeah. up. But yeah, um, yeah just to um, sort of uh, re reiterate, if you want to help support the podcast uh, and everything I'm doing here, uh, you know, check out my sponsor, Vessi Seeds. And if, you, if they sell something you need, buy it from them using my coupon code, GAVS22, and you'll get free shipping. Uh, if you if you got a pest problem, you go to Safer's website. They got a lot of different options for a wide range of different kinds of pests. Their whole mm. thing is, is creating uh, solutions to pests that are sort of yeah, Eco ecologically responsible would be the right word for yeah. it, right? Um, anyway, you can buy this stuff from Best Sea Seeds, and uh, cool. yeah, and if you you know check out the Newfoundland Knife Company if you want to get ten percent off on a knife or a saw or a cool axe or or whatever else other gear they have there, and uh, if you're uh, feeling like some uh, vi vicarious outdoors activities, uh, check out my other YouTube channel, Outdoors on the Chief, and uh, see what's going on there. Yeah. Uh, subscribe cool. to the channel and uh, you got a chance to win one of these, a folding silky saw. Awesome. Right. So uh, other than that, everybody, thanks for listening. It's been a great year. Had a great year. And uh, Dave, thanks for, thanks for doing this with me. <laughs> no problem, man. It's always fun. <laughs> Maybe I'll get up and see your garden this year. Who knows? Oh, yeah, hope so. Yeah. Dave, uh, for those of you that watched my channel, there was a video where it was like from, from a, above, a flying uh, perspective. Drone. So he had bought this drone. And uh, so he, he filmed that footage. Um, yeah. I think the idea was that he'd film the footage when nothing was growing. And then they were kind of come yeah. back and sort of at the height of the garden, but we couldn't make it happen. It's no big deal. Yeah, so yeah. Maybe, maybe this year. I, this, I keep yeah. meeting thinking about buying one of those and then i look at the price and i'm so cheap i don't do it uh yeah you would ben you would benefit from it uh but i just actually, used it yeah. once <laughs> yeah well that's true we we've scaled down we, we actually got rid of the bigger drones we're, we're planning on getting a smaller one that's more manageable and you don't need the permits and everything to fly it right so but yeah maybe we'll uh maybe we'll make that happen this year that'd be cool awesome. all right everybody else until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. <laughs> have a good one. Thanks, Dave. See you, buddy. <laughs>